Welcome to the fifth installment of the Travel Time Reliability video series. In this module, we'll learn about the activities involved in conducting a travel time reliability analysis. These activities fall into the larger categories of data entry, verification, calibration, and validation. Here are the learning objectives for Module 5. Understand which steps of a travel time reliability analysis take place after all the data has been collected and before the analysis results can be prepared for presentation. Understand the main principles behind data entry for traffic analysis tools. Understand the definitions and benefits of model verification, calibration, and validation. In module number four, we discussed the different forms of data that are used for a travel time reliability analysis and the various available methods for collecting that data. In this module, we assume that all data have been collected and it is time to actually perform the analysis. We further assume that much of the original raw data have been preserved because the amount of variability in the data is critical to a reliability analysis. That variability may be lost if the analyst only cares about average values and discards the original data. The first step of performing the analysis involves creating the model in the software. The level of effort involved in creating the model is often proportional to the input data requirements. For example, sketch planning tools may simply require filling out one form or a single worksheet within a spreadsheet. Beyond sketch planning, a more rigorous data entry process may be required. Considering the several categories of data entry illustrated here, the data entry process may take several days or weeks, depending on the size of the network being analyzed. In fact, prior to the data entry phase, a considerable amount of time is often needed for consolidating and cleaning the data, even after the data have been collected. The most comprehensive tools, which are usually simulation models, may explicitly support all options. Other tools may have limitations or assumptions and only require a subset of options. In most tools that extend beyond sketch planning, analysis of travel time reliability requires the user to specify the reliability reporting period. An appropriate reporting period is typically between one year and three years. Many of the tools that extend beyond sketch planning provide a scenario-based modeling approach. Under this approach, analyses of separate and discrete scenarios are performed in order to capture the effects of varying operating conditions, for example, demand variability, incidents, weather, visibility, work zones, special events. Several scenarios can be defined to capture the effects of weather and incidents. These scenarios are then examined by the core model towards generating a distribution of possible outcomes. This example of data cluster shows that incidents and poor weather produce a maximum speed reduction when both occur simultaneously. This demonstrates the importance of developing and calibrating separate models to reflect separate operating conditions. Volume 3 of the FHWA Traffic Analysis Toolbox contains detailed information on model calibration. Many output performance measures and visualizations are possible, as discussed further in the final module. In some cases, the tools analyze various operating conditions through the generation of individual scenario datasets. Each dataset would be a copy of the original base dataset, albeit with subtle input data modifications to reflect the operating condition. Dozens or hundreds of scenario datasets may be automatically generated as a function of a few seed inputs from the user. These inputs may include seasonal rain probability, weekly demand variability, incident probability, and other variations. Monte Carlo calculations may be applied to assign traffic demand levels, weather conditions, and incident frequencies to any given dataset. Alternatively, the Traffic Analysis Toolbox Travel Time Reliability Addendums describe a manual method of creating scenario datasets. One of the SHARP-2 L04 pilot studies tested the Scenario Manager and Trajectory Processor on the streets of Phoenix, Arizona. Sources of variability incorporated into the analysis included incidents, changing weather, and varying traffic demand volumes. The pilot study report discussed the data entry for these operating conditions. 
This table shows an example of scenario manager incident data requirements, but the report also addressed demand and weather data inputs. After creating the model, the next step in the travel time reliability analysis involves verification, calibration, and validation, or VC&V. The VC&V tasks include four key steps. First, checking that the software package can analyze the settings of interest. Second, ensuring that the input data correctly describe those settings. Third, adjusting the model parameters so they produce outputs consistent with field observations. And finally, checking that the model produces overall results that are defensible for the settings of interest. Verification pertains to the first two of these, calibration, the third, and validation, the fourth. This process may be applied to sketch planning models, deterministic models, and simulation models. As with creating the model, the level of effort involved in the VC and V process is often proportional to the input data requirements. The simplest analysis tools may only require VC and V for a small number of input parameters. For example, Volume demands, signal timings, and lane configurations are all inputs that can be verified and validated, but only the saturation flow rate would be considered a calibration parameter. Many analyses could benefit from a scenario-based calibration. Under this approach, extensive field data are collected in order to identify the effects of varying operating conditions. This figure illustrates the definition of three scenarios to capture these variability effects. FHWA's Traffic Analysis Toolbox Volume 3 provides more detail on the cluster analysis procedure, which can produce robust calibration outcomes. The following case study exemplifies a real-world VC&V effort. The second strategic highway program, also known as SHARP-2, conducted a series of simulation-based case studies in their fourth reliability project, known as LO4. In the SHARP-2 LO4 Portland pilot study, two data sources were used to obtain the necessary volume and verification data. The Portland Archival Listing, also known as Portal, is a unique online database maintained at Portland State University. The Oregon Department of Transportation also obtains real-time and historical travel time data from a commercial GPS data provider. For verification purposes, GPS datasets were available to determine facility-level speeds and travel times. Agencies have access to GPS data for any selected year, month, and day of the week. All data are reported at the segment level, which provides excellent resolution. This figure illustrates the GPS data coverage area in the project area along Interstate 5. One of the benefits of GPS probe data is that it contains a rich set of statistical attributes, such as averages, standard deviations, and percentile breakdowns. The travel time data allows the analyst to evaluate, understand, and communicate the reasons behind the variability. This opens doors to assessing whether operational improvements will lessen the variability and help make travel more predictable. This figure illustrates the travel time calculations derived from GPS data along the Interstate 5 project area located in Portland, Oregon. Finally, probe data can be used to produce heat maps such as the one shown in this figure. During this pilot test, these maps proved very useful in identifying the origin, duration, and extent of congestion within a freeway facility. An important finding from this project is that travel time reliability within a facility must be determined through a regional or large area analysis, and not through a sub-area study with boundaries drawn narrowly around the subject facility. This is because, in virtually all urban areas today, facility traffic volumes and travel time characteristics are frequently affected by congestion and incidents in other parts of the region that can be far removed from the facility itself. These effects come not only from queue backups, but also from vehicle path diversions, affecting volume and speed in the subject facility. In the case of Portland's pilot test site, Observed congestion and reduced travel times within the facility were frequently found to be caused by incidents and bottlenecks located well outside the facility boundaries. 
This example clearly shows that the initial source of congestion and queuing was located south of the facility's southern boundary because the congested area extends beyond the top of the heat map. In summary, this module discussed the major aspects of conducting a travel time reliability analysis, which occur after the data collection effort. These aspects include software data entry to create the model, followed by verification, calibration, and validation. The level of effort involved in all of these steps is often proportional to the input data requirements. Where sketch planning tools would have the smallest requirements and microscopic simulation tools would have the largest. In addition to specifying the typical input data common to most tools, such as geometric data and traffic volume data, a reliability analysis often requires the analyst to specify a reliability reporting period. Many of the tools that extend beyond sketch planning provide a scenario-based modeling approach in which numerous scenario datasets are used to model a wide variety of operational conditions. After creating and running the model, the VC and V process can begin. This process is critical for obtaining realistic models to provide accurate information for decision making. Verification confirms that the software package can analyze the relevant traffic conditions and ensures the input data correctly describes those conditions. Calibration adjusts the model parameters so they produce outputs consistent with field observations. Validation confirms that the model produces sensible overall results. When possible, a scenario-based VCNV process should be used. The scenario-based VCNV process ensures that an accurate model will be available for each of the most common operational scenarios. Module number six in the video series will focus on performance measures and visualizations for travel time reliability analysis. These numeric outputs and graphical outputs provide rich information on annual system performance, which facilitates better understanding by stakeholders and decision makers.